Let's all grow together. What's up, YouTube? So today I'm gonna show you guys how to replace the keyboard on an HP ZBook. That's a business grade laptop. If you guys haven't heard of it, you might wanna watch this because I'll also show you guys how to get mobile 4G LTE or the 5G LTE on your laptop, no more connection to Wi-Fi. Well, check it all out. All right, so first we have one big thing. This is the difference between your regular personal computers and other computers. So you probably never use a personal computer or a gaming computer. This you can do that with. I'll go ahead and point back out of that. Probably what they would see. You literally, I literally have no screws on nothing. Literally, this is how it slides shut and it opens. And the repairs on this are so simple. I literally want to do the thing. So. See that? That's a little keyboard mark. All right, so we're gonna unscrew this one first. And they don't come out all the way. So we just wait until it's loose enough where you can actually bounce it right there. See, bounces, it's loose enough. Now there's another keyboard one right there. See it? Okay, so same thing. We're going to unscrew like so. All right, and now we kind of flip it over. I want you guys to pay attention to this one little spot um, on the other side. You're gonna to want to flip it over and look at it while you push through the certain little hole. So this hole is, let me zoom in on it real quick. If you will, honesty. That's my daughter on the camera, by the way. The most beautiful girl in the world. Okay, so this right there it is where you actually can push through. And if you push in the wrong spot, you end up pushing I'm just speaking. Speaking. Don't push, push real hard, now thinking you're pushing the wrong spot because it only takes a little bit of pressure to actually get that frame to pop out. And once you get the frame to pop out, like so, right there, you'll see it, you'll see it pop up just a tad bit right there um, by the three key, I believe. Um, and so I used a guitar pick type thing. It's more for repairing. It just pushes over enough to where I can pull it off. Guitar or pick or just your thumbnail like I did right there. So, um, the reason uh, why usually, mine I came off so easy is because I, I actually had started this video and <laughs> we didn't even record. We actually started with a picture <laughs> and so we started all over. Um, but it, it's pretty simple, you know. You just you slide that off. You don't feel like you're breaking it because you're not going to break it. Even if you do, it's, you get a new keyboard with a new frame, right? All right. So now what we want to do is take off these ribbon cables and be careful when you take. Take them off to make sure that you know exactly how they go back on. If not, you got the video as a guide. Um, this is a really easy process. Um, I was silly enough to try to fix the actual broken keyboard. I spilt beans on my keyboard. This is why I'm doing the repair. Um, and so I took the keyboard itself and like got all in there, ripped off the black plastic piece and try to clean it up real nice forever and sprayed all the stuff on it and it was just a big waste of my time the, you know the actual keyboard itself cost me $16 and so with the $16 oh by the way what I'm taking the tape off right there that's your third you know your pointing device so you have three cables one cable is gonna go to your backlight of the keyboard itself you're gonna have one uh, cable that goes to the keyboard to, for the keystrokes and you're gonna have one goes to the actual pointing device, that little rubber mount in the middle. Okay, so let's get to it. So now we're gonna reconnect these cables, just in case you guys have, you know, forgot how they go back on. Um, I actually um, just flipped over the keyboard, um, and I'm mounting or putting, inserting this uh, ribbon cable into the pointing device right now first. Um, it makes it a little bit easier when you connect it. Some people might do it the other way. However, you know, you prefer, it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you're putting them in there the right way, you wanna have the blue tip facing away from the actual keyboard when you put it on, and you wanna have the blue tip facing um, away from the board itself right there, the top of the board that, you know, right in front of you as you see on the camera. Okay, so like and subscribe. Look, this is how we survive. Our, us techs out here, you know, it's hard. In Texas, where I'm at, like nobody can afford computer repair. And if they did, they'd just buy another computer anyways. And they're buying these junk PCs. And let me tell you guys something like, don't go to Walmart and buy a PC. Don't go to Target, Best Buy, and buy yourself a PC if you want a good PC. Like this is a business grade laptop that runs better than my HP Omen that I use. It's an HP ZBook and you can get them for like 600 bucks and you'll get the i7 core processor ones. Um, this is the 14 uh, mo mo module workstation, let me correct myself. 
Um, and by the way, it was so much simpler just to churn the computer like that to do it. Um, I actually am re-recording my audio as I was getting frustrated doing this. So, um, anyways, you know, let me go back to what I was talking about with the uh, keyboard itself. And so I was saying this $16 to get you a new keyboard. That's so much cheaper than the time that you will waste and the value in your time, if you value your time at all. Cause like, it's just, you know, whenever you press the key down, there's a little, little bitty, um, like ribbon cables that make a s complete circuit and your actual keyboard has its own processor, which I had no clue. I started looking it up and if, you know, one of those cables breaks and, you know, then like my keyboard, half of my keyboard just wouldn't work. And so I didn't know that until I actually researched it and I'm stubborn and I try to fix things, even though I knew it was only $15 to replace it. I wanted my you know computer to work. I wanted it to work then. And if it doesn't work, I want to know how or why it's not going to work and why I can't fix it. And so there you go. That's why it's because, you know, you, you, like you said, my, or like I said, my computer or your computer's keyboard, every keyboard has its own processor in it. And, and there's those micro components and when you press down it completes a circuit and if it's you know one little you know bad spot break in that circuit um, on one of those ribbon cables then you know it's done just get yourself a new one um, you might be able to actually order that bottom piece and re-put it on there but I will I don't know I wouldn't recommend it um, so anyways <laughs> Now I'm going to finish, this is connecting the, the black light right there, or the back light to the keyboard, and from there it's, you know, a matter of getting those um, screws in line with the keyboard, and kind of to, you know, you'll notice like there's two humps whenever you try to push that back on there, those two humps are from the actual screws itself. Now whenever I do this, I actually... I push on there and I hold it down for a second, which I kind of skipped through that part of the video, um, just specifically because I'm trying to make this shorter uh, rather than longer. Um, so I held it with my thumb and just started the screws. Um, and then I closed the lid and finished screwing it in. So um, right now I'm just kind of putting pressure. I start from you know the, the edges and I go into the center all the way out to the outside. And I slap that plastic piece on there and it's you know it goes on there really nice it stays flush that way um <clears throat> like and subscribe as this is how we survive us techs out here are struggling let me tell you in, 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 i'm in texas and literally like this is the most ridiculous place like for pc repair i've put all kinds of ads up i've talked to all kinds of people the nicest phones I've seen around are like Galaxy S3s and 4s and people want to fix them. I'm like, well, I'll fix it, but it's just cheaper to get you a better phone, right? You know, so um, we're not doing good out here. You know, if you're in a metropolitan area where there's, you know, thousands of people every square block, well, then you're going to be doing good, you know, but uh, out in these rural parts of the, you know, boom docks, I would call them where we're at, we just, we, we don't have a lot of luck. So if you guys uh, have found any value at all in this video whatsoever, the donations, the likes, the shares, and subscribes are really helpful. So if you guys can keep that up, I definitely appreciate every one of those. The comments, the, you know, any engagement at all will help. Um, all right, so now what I'm going to do is, like I said, I, I held it with my thumbs um, first, and, and I'm going to go ahead and screw those in. Um, daughter's handing me the battery now. We'll get that put on there. And <clears throat> right now, I think... I Maybe I didn't hold it down with the screws. I don't, I don't know. I know I, the first time I did it, I did it with the screws, and then we actually re-recorded the video, so maybe that worked right there. Um, but either way, I, if you if you find that problem, um, then just go ahead and hold it down with your thumbs. If not, you know, don't do it. Um, I'm not gonna keep recording this for video. It's just like my fifth time. You know, donate for sure. Everything counts. Uh, a cup of coffee, whatever. <clears throat> I have a lot of other videos on the HPZ book actually did a complete disassembly. Um, I was doing a recording with the, H or the Samsung Gear 360. Didn't realize that I was recording in the 360 degree mode half of the time as it kept switching, with, you know, me not being aware of that as I was watching it with my phone. You can actually Bluetooth and watch what you're recording. Should have done that, um, but there are some good useful tips in there. If you want to see how to completely tear it down, you can see uh, you know, some good parts in that. Um, and I haven't really found the best video editor for that. So the boot time on this starts at 12 minutes or 12, yeah, 12 minutes, 24 seconds. And it ends right here. 
at 12 minutes and 33 seconds, which gives you a total boot time of nine seconds flat, which is awesome. Um, and I, I have added a video in the description below of how to upgrade my or your HP ZBook. Um, so it's just a matter of getting the right solid state drive um, as there's only a certain amount that you can get. Um, there's actually another spot that says SSD on there and only HP is you know um, capable of giving you those parts. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in and now I will show you guys exactly how we connect to the 4G LTE is the last part of the video that I promised. All right, so here we go. Uh, flip it over where you're gonna get our jumbo SIM. To get the jumbo SIM, what you're gonna need to do is call T-Mobile. If you have AT&T or Verizon, then you just tell them you need it for your computer and you know, you're good to go. They'll give you five gigabytes and then they'll throttle your data all the way down to you know 2G after that and it'll be slow as ever. T-Mobile, on the other hand, charges me $25 a month on the T-Mobile One plan with my business account. I pay $130 for two phones and then it's $25 a tablet. It's $25 a tablet either way though. So if you want to just get a personal one, you can do that as well. And it gives you 50 gigabytes cap on the 4G LTE high speed and literally everywhere I go, doesn't matter, I've been in Wichita, Kansas, I've been in um, Rio Hondo, San Benito, Harlingen, and wherever I go, like the T-Mobile is so much faster than AT&T and Verizon, which is very weird to me that they would be because, you know, you pay so much more for AT&T and I don't really understand that. And maybe it's because I use those five gigabytes, but I'm, you know, I've tested it right when I got, you know, service and it's like, I even had AT&T come out to the house and hardwire the, you know, um, internet to my home and AT&T's internet was literally so slow that the guy was like, dude, we can't even give you service. Like, it's, you're gonna get one megabyte per second down. I was like, what? I was like, that's crazy, you know? And so maybe that's just Texas. That was the only time I actually ever had AT&T come out to hardwire or something. But when I was in Wichita, uh, there's Cox Communication came out and I was getting like 150 megabytes per second down. AT&T told me they could only give me about 12 to 15 megabytes per second down. And they'll tell you <coughs> that, you know, they offer services up to 100 megabytes per second down 150 whatever but it's the up to that people don't really catch so that up to is will get you every time you notice how i just flip my uh you know the sim card upside down slid it in there it's easy peasy one two three um and then i'm gonna flip this over turn it on and show you guys that it works let me go ahead i'm actually gonna have to cut out a part of the video because i think i actually put my password in wrong four or five times here i forgot it but I'm going to show you this boot time one more time just to show you that it's working every time uh, in the quick nine seconds like before. And bada bing, bada boom, we're in. And I mean, it's, it's got to update and stuff too, so it would be faster if I really played with it. But let me show you the 4G LTE. This is dope, and then I'll actually show you the speed test through Oakland or OKLA, and I believe it is, I forget connected i wanted to keep that right there in your face so you can know for sure that that's what it said um, and i was the cameraman by myself so i just kind of got a screenshot and freeze that frame now we're gonna go over here to o-k-l-a-n so i don't pronounce it wrong and butcher their name again um i hate to be spelling it wrong but i don't really care all right so here we go let's test it out this is for this is t-mobile right now oh my goodness look at this Come on, baby, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, come on, give me a 40, give me a 40. No, no 40, oh wait, 34, that's all I'm gonna get. Okay, so 34 megabytes per second down. I'm inside of a house, if I was outside, it'd be faster, and that's what it's made for, right? Mo you know, being a mobile workstation. The upload though, what, 22, 23, 20, come on, 24, maybe, oh, 24? 24 megabytes, that's dope, like that's awesome. That's amazing right there. That's no Wi-Fi, nothing. That right there is uh, you know, amazing. So anyways, thank you all for watching my video. Check out the other ones. Um, I wanna show you guys a little bit more if you need the troubleshooting with the 4G LCE or if you guys need anything uh, as far as making your computer faster, virus removal. Just let me know in the comments below and I got you, I'm out.